God's blessing is upon you and you begin to focus on the scriptures that says everything that you do will prosper, not just one day, every day you focus on it and begin to see yourself prospering, increasing and dominating every problem and challenge that comes against you. Do that. Then you see you will prosper. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Worship Your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to reign. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart. Since faith is in that word, the word is loaded with faith, and uh, that is the seed for all the things that you're hoping for, you know. So where does faith come from? Faith comes from the word because God has put faith in the word. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Where does faith come from? It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, I'm, I know this, you know, I've heard. That's the problem, you know. I've been preaching for 40 years now. Now, I'm, I've learned now that even though I've looked at it a thousand times, I have to look at it again because there's always something more in it, you know. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, it does not say faith comes because you heard. Faith comes by hearing, not because you heard, but because you're hearing. It indicates that it's talking about something present continuous. Hearing is something that is happening, happening presently, and it is happening continuously over a long period of time. Because faith, you're hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing, not heard, but hearing. This is the problem with a lot of Christian people. They heard last Christmas, you know, on message. And then they'll come back for next Christmas. They think God should bless them and God should, you know, pour down his great blessings from heaven upon them. And this must happen. That must I went to church last Christmas, you know. And New Year, I was in church, 12 o'clock. I was in the church. My head was in there, you know. 
<laughs> That's not how spiritual life works. A lot of people have a lot of ideas, you know, that if you started out in a New Year service, then everything through the year will be just right. So if you started a business, ask this great man of God to come and bless it, everything should be all right. And when everything is not all right, they say, why he came and prayed and nothing is working? Where does the Bible say if he came and, came and prayed, everything will work? That's not how the spiritual life works, you see. That's not how it works. You know, some people say, you just step into our place, that's all. <laughs> Looks like they're going to take a footprint, you know, and hang it on the wall, you know. Because they believe in the power of that feet, you know, stepping in to that place. Everything will be blessed, you know. They believe all kinds of this kind of thing, you know. But they just don't believe the proper method of how everything works. If you want your business to be successful, you begin to begin with the word, my friend. Take the word that, has, that speaks about how God will command a blessing upon the work of your hand, that everything that you put your hand to do will prosper, Amen. that you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You shall not wither. You'll be green and lush because God's blessing is upon you. And you begin to focus on the scriptures that says everything that you do will prosper, not just one day, every Every day you focus on it and begin to see yourself prospering, increasing, and dominating every problem and challenge that comes against you. Do that. Then you see you will prosper. A lot of people are, particularly our Indian people are very sentimental. Let's hang that verse over here, you know. <laughs> Put that verse, see, <laughs> they, they look at the Bible like this, you know. One time I printed a handbill for a big meeting and I didn't put any Bible words. One guy, one preacher got very mad at me. He said, there's not one verse. You should have put that verse. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why you didn't put it? You're a Christian preacher. You didn't put one verse in it. He believes one verse must be there on top, one at the bottom. And if you put one on sides also, he's very happy. Because it's just covered with words. Bible verses are, you know, he understands Bible verses in a sentimental way like that, you know. Nothing wrong with putting that, but the thing is, he just thinks of it in a sentimental way, that's all. So the, even the preachers sometimes become very sentimental. They use Bible verses as a hook to hang their thoughts on. <laughs> they want to say something. They've got some idea they, they want to preach about. So they say, which verse can I use? See, they got the preaching already. They got the sermon already. It didn't come from the Bible. They've got something to say about the Women's Day or, uh, you know, something like that, you know. <laughs> they got something from somewhere, you know. So they say, now let me just search very hard. You know any Women's Day verse? <laughs> so it's like, the, it's like that hangers that we have in the house, you know, the hooks. Uh, where we, when you take off your shirt, you don't want to throw it on the sofa or something, you know, or the bed, you want to hang it, you know. So they have this neat hangers, you know, hanging verses, you know. That you can hang many things in. You can say it this way or that way. It doesn't matter what that verse is saying. You just have a, need just a hanger to hang it. That's all. That verse may not be about that at all, you know. You understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, we have a different approach. You must go into the Bible, find out what it is talking about, what it is actually saying. Right? And the preaching must come out of this, not just hanging something onto it. It must come, arise out of this. That is, the, that is the way we need to do it because the Word of God is serious business. It is the seed. It has the power. It's not my preaching that has the power. It, the word has the power in it to bring to pass what it is saying. The word is very powerful. It, ha, it, is, it has the seed of faith in it. It has the power in it to bring healing. It has the power in it to bring deliverance and salvation. It has the power in it. 
I don't have the power. It has the power. The word has the power. And when I take the word and put it in my mouth and proclaim it, the power is mine also because it is mine through the word of God. So I need to find out what the word is saying. So faith cometh by hearing, by continuous hearing. Now, if faith comes by hearing, then fear also comes by hearing. Negative things also come by hearing. So hearing is something very important. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear God's word, you get faith. When you hear the devil's word, you get what? <laughs> Fear. All you're doing is watching TV. What do you get? You get junk. <laughs> One fellow said, all I'm doing is just watching news, brother. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> Because they got about 2% good news and 98% bad news. <laughs> no good news. <laughs> so what do you get? See, hearing is very important. You see. Hearing is very important. You see, whatever you hear, that's what you end up believing. Have you heard husbands and wives complain? You know, It happens both sides. Sometimes husbands will say, you see, my wife, but the problem is she's hearing what her mother says too much. <laughs> See, you don't believe hearing will do anything, will bring faith. Listen to these guys, you know, they say, she's always giving ear to her mother and she's always telling her the wrong stuff. <laughs> oh, faith cometh by hearing. <laughs> but it's... But it's not just faith that cometh by hearing. A lot of other things also comes by hearing. Paul is not giving us the whole truth there. <laughs> He's just covering faith there. But I'm covering everything else there. <laughs> See, my sister-in-law is talking to her all the time. Today they talk three hours, brother, and she's listening to everything that he's saying. She's saying, and she believes that more than what I say. Because she hears that more, she believes that more. And if you heard your father or your mother, your sister, whatever more, and that's what is going to, you will believe whatever they say more. And, and it, this thing happens every day in the houses and you see how hearing what somebody says affects a person. Just imagine what will happen if that person sits down with the Bible and uh, some tapes and CDs and starts hearing the word of God. I'll tell you, my friend, a spiritual transformation will happen because when you hear the word of God, faith will come. But a lot of people are looking at shows that produce a lot of fear. Now, if faith comes by hearing, if that's the truth, then hearing becomes very important. And not only hearing, it becomes very important. What we speak becomes important because more than what you hear from others, you hear yourself most of the time. Just think about that. You're not in. You're just hearing me one hour, uh, one hour or one hour ten minutes or so every week. But the rest of the time, you're hearing yourself. So you may hear me for just one hour or so every week. And rest of the time, 24 hours of the day, you are hearing yourself. And you got to be careful about what you speak. You got to be careful to put God's word in your mouth and speak it because you are hearing what you speak and that will produce whatever you hear. It can produce faith, it can produce fear, it can produce a lot of things. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 23, it says, man shall have joy by the words of his Mouth. Now you know why a lot of people don't have joy. They need a mouth checkup. Not with the dentist. <laughs> but they need to check what's coming out of the mouth. Man shall have joy by the words of his mouth. The words bring what? Joy. Eh? Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith... According to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. He's referring to the Old Testament, particularly Psalm 116, verse 10, where the psalmist says, I believed and therefore I spoke. He says, I'm the same, I'm from the same group, he says. 
Psalmist was a faith man. He says, I believed and therefore I spoke. See, you always believe, you always speak what you believe. He says, Paul says, I'm also of the same category. I also believe, we also believe and therefore we speak. We believe and speak. But believe and speaking is only one side. You also speak and you believe what you speak. Not only do you believe what you speak, you speak what you, I mean, whatever you speak, you end up believing. Not only do you speak because you believe something, you believe something because you've spoken something long enough that has become part of your belief. When somebody else speaks, you hear it a long time, certainly it produces an effect upon you. That is, that, that is what advertisements are based on. Have you ever seen watching cricket for one hour? They showed you the same advertisement about 20 times in that one hour. Every time there's a break between one ball bold and the next one, you know, they're showing that advertisement. They're hoping by repeated showing that you start believing it, that that's the only product available for you to brush your teeth, you know, and make it white, you know, in the whole world. That if you can get that, you can fix all your teeth problems, you know. By, by the end of the thing, more than cricket, you've seen what toothpaste helps you, you know. They believe in this philosophy that if you say it again and again and again and again, more repetition, repetitions, the better, and people will believe it. And everybody uses it, you know. Everybody uses it for their own advantage. They, they, they believe that if you say a lie a thousand times, then it will become a truth. Because it's been said a thousand times. Have you heard people say, I thought I heard something like this. See, they think that is truth because they heard it. Just because they heard it, they believe it's the truth. It's not a truth just because you heard it. You got to determine whether it's truth or not. But just because it's been heard so many times, people believe that's the truth, you see. So, you believe and speak, that's the spirit of faith. It also means that you speak and therefore you believe what you speak, you see. So what you speak, you have to be very careful about because the devil has brought people under bondage in this way. The devil has no authority over us. So, you know, he can't really make us do anything. He can't do anything to us. So the one thing that you have to watch out is the devil knows that many of us don't know what to speak. So he snares us by our words. When we speak the wrong things, then we are brought under bondage by the very thing that we have spoken, you know. He has no authority except the authority that we give him by speaking wrong things with our mouth. Because God has established the law, the law that whatever you say, you will have. He will have whatever he says. The Bible doesn't say you will have whatever the devil says. Whatever the devil says is his business. It's not going to affect me in any way. But what I say is going to affect me, and the devil knows it. So he's happy when I'm talking the wrong thing, when I'm saying, when I'm speaking my failure, when I'm speaking my worries, when I'm speaking my defeat, when I'm speaking that I am not able, that I don't have the power, when I'm speaking that I can't do it, the devil is happy because he can grind me to the ground and make me a failure just by my speaking. He does not need any other weapon. He has no authority to make me a failure. He has no power to defeat me. He has no power to grind me to the ground. He, he cannot do anything. He's powerless. The power is in my words. So he just simply inspires me to speak in that way so that he can defeat me and bring me under bondage to my own words. You know, you shall be far from oppression, Isaiah 54, 14 says. And you shall be, and you shall not fear. See, the fear and oppression are very related. Oppression can happen without somebody touching you and uh, inflicting some pain on you. You've experienced that, right? Some people oppress you and you become worried. You cannot eat. You cannot sleep. You cannot be happy. You cannot function normally because oppression. They come and oppress you mentally 
without ever touching you, without ever coming near you. They'll be living 10,000 miles away and they'll be oppressing you here. Right? Oppression. Fear and oppression have something to do with each other. He said, you'll be far from oppression because you will not fear, it says. You know, when the people of Israel sent spies into the promised land, the 12 spies that went, 10 of them came with an evil report, it says. Why it's called evil report? What's wrong with that report? If you actually look at their report, actually, some people will say there's nothing evil about it. They came back talking what? Talking what they saw, what they heard, and what they felt. They said, we saw a big wall. The wall was too big. There are giants in the land. There are weapons. There are man-eaters. They'll eat us away. We're like grasshoppers before them. They're so big. We can't do it. We can't take it. They saw, heard, and felt, and they simply spoke what? They, they were not telling a lie about the wall. They were not telling a lie about the tall men, big men. They were not telling any lie. They were telling the truth, actually. They saw, heard, and felt things, and they came and reported it. That was called an evil report by God. God was angry, you know. It was declared as an evil report. Why it's an evil report? It's an evil report because they contradicted what God said. God said, I've given you this land. And these people said, no, we can't take that land. It's impossible for us to take that land. It's not evil if you just reported what you saw, heard, and uh, felt. I want to clarify that because when you go out in the street, you'll find a big truck coming, you know. <laughs> and they're just coming so fast. And don't say, Pastor Sam just told us not to believe what you see, what you heard, <laughs> and what you feel. Get over on the side, my friend. Let him go. He's mad. These fellows are outrageous the way they drive, you know. Get over as far away as possible from him. Believe what you see. <laughs> see, Christians are not crazy people that don't believe what I see. No, no, no. Nothing wrong with what you see. Nothing wrong with reporting what you see, but the thing is, when it contradicts what God has said, that is an evil report. What is your report in your house? What kind of report are you giving every day in your house? Are you going around saying, anything I do doesn't amount to anything? Whatever I touch, it's not amounting to anything. Whatever I touch, it's failure. And when you start something, you say, well, you watch. This time also, it's going to be the same thing. I know I can't do it. It just won't work out. That's an evil report, my friend. What kind of report must be in your mouth, in your house? If you meditate on the word of the Lord day and night, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You, your leaves shall not wither. You will yield your fruit in season, and whatever you do shall prosper. That's the good report. That's what God says. When you're facing difficult challenge, when you're facing a problem, when you're facing a downturn in your life, you begin to proclaim, whatever I do shall prosper because God says I shall prosper. I meditate upon the word of the Lord night and day. The word is in me. Faith is in me. The power to go up is in me. The power to dominate and subdue everything is in me. That is a good report. Giants, I'll kill the giants. Walls, I'll bring down the walls. No problem. I'll take the city because God said it's possible, it's possible. That's a good report. Anything else is a bad report. Thanks be to God, who always God says us, triumphant his name. Thanks be to God, who always God says us to win. Yeah. Thanks be to God, who always God says us, triumph in his name. Thanks be to God, thanks be to God. We have overcome, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have overcome by the power of your name. Jesus, you're the Thanks be to God, who always God 
says us triumph in his name and speak who always causes us to win yeah and speak who always causes us to triumph in his name thanks clap our hands and say thanks be to God we have overcome You're the one, hallelujah, hallelujah, the one who made a way for us to triumph in the name of the world, the world, the world, the Got the victory. We got the victory. Everything will be all right, all right. We got the victory. Everything will be. All right.